everyone welcome to Pension Matters, the pension awareness program where we teach you how to go about the contributory pension scheme and the pension industry in Nigeria. My name is Princess Tribe Ibrahim and I'm so glad to have you join us. On today's episode of the program, we'll be discussing compliance and enforcement of the new contributory pension scheme. For details of this and more, stay with us as the program will come back shortly. Don't go away. Do you know there is a new pension scheme in Nigeria? It is mandatory. It is contributory. It is fully funded. Based on individual retirement savings account, under the supervision of the National Pensions Commission, the new pension scheme guarantees lifelong financial independence for every citizen of Nigeria in public or private employment. PENCOM says it's a new dawn. Call the National Pensions Commission now or log on to www.pencom.gov.ng for further details. Pencom, your contribution counts. Welcome back. The program is Pension Matters. The new contributory pension scheme stipulates that if you have three staff or more, you must enroll them for pension, aside from other benefits like the group life and so on and so forth. So, today, we are going to be discussing the enforcement of this law, but that will be after Adamat have taken us through what is trailing in the pension industry this week. Thank you very much, Princess. Viewers, welcome to Pension Trail, where I will give you the latest updates and happenings in the pension industry. I am Adanze Okoracha. On our story today, Edo government pays gratuities to pensioners. Edo State Governor Comrade Adams Oshumwole commends the payment of outstanding gratuities to state pensioners who retired from the state civil service between 2010 and 2011. The governor said the state had also started the review of the entire process of paying pension and gratuities. He also assured that it will no longer be business as usual and emphasized his determination to do his best with available resources. Next on our story today, Pencom holds Consumers Forum in Lagos. A symposium was put together to create a window of opportunity for workers in Lagos State to enable them rob mines with operators in Nigeria's pension industry. The symposium, which was a median edition of Nigeria Pension Consumers Forum, was designed to educate employers and employees on the importance of subscribing to contributory pension scheme in Nigeria. Lastly, Ekiti State to take up contributory pension scheme. The Ekiti State Government has set up a high power committee to work out modalities for a speedy takeoff of the contributory pension scheme in the state. The Executive Secretary of the State Pension Commission, Mr. James Aniola, who made this known at a forum in Adekiti said, the committee will, among other things, examine merits and the merits of the scheme to identify and provide solutions to all the constraints hindering the commencement of the scheme in the state. Well, viewers, that's much we can take on pension trail today. Let's get back to Princess. Thank you, Ada, for that beautiful update. I'm so glad the pension industry is full of activities this week. Well, viewers, welcome to our up close segment. On our up close segment today, we'll be discussing the issue of compliance and enforcement. And to do that with me is the head, Compliance and Enforcement Department of the National Pension Commission in the person of Mr. Mohamed Bello Umar, sorry, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So nice to have you join us today because the issues I'm going to discuss borders on the RSA holders in the country. The Pension Reform Act of June 2004, which was amended in year 2014, it's the place that if you have three staff or more, you should be able to enroll them for pension. So what do you have to say about non-compliance by private sector to this arrangement. Well, thank you very much. First of all, um, the Pension Reform Act came in 2004, and it was, like you pointed out, amended in 2014. Now it has recorded significant prog uh, progress. Um, from zero, we have now registered members that are participating of over six million. And uh, we have pension assets of over five trillion. Hmm. So there is a tremendous progress in terms of participation. But um, 
if you look at Nigeria, one will say that six million or so is still low compared to maybe the potential uh, that will happen. Now, let me tell you one thing: is that the organized private sector, we have covered virtually all of them in terms of if you look at the institution, whether it's financial sector, it is the manufacturing, all those that are quoted in the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and regulated entities like insurance, like health, and all that thing. Now, most of the sectors that are not covered are in the informal sector. Right now, we have over 200,000 employers registered under the uh, contribution registration system. Okay. So, we have over 200,000 employers. Mm. So, it's not a small thing, and it's a lot of progress. But the bulk of the working population are in the informal sector. Exactly. So, and that is the next level that we are working towards, definitely. What is the plan of the National Pension Commission towards making the informal sector to be part of this beautiful contributory scheme? We recognize the informal sector as the most significant in terms of the labor force. And uh, we have worked assiduously towards getting, to, getting them to enroll. The first thing we did was to make sure that in the amendment that we was done in uh, the 2014, there was express provision for the informal sector participation. In the 2004, there was no express prohibition, so it was difficult for us to come up with the framework and guidelines. Mm -hmm. But so in the amendment was succeeded in getting that one, and uh, now the law provides that, I mean, uh, for persons that are working in employment with less than three persons, or even the self-employed, can participate in the contributory pension scheme. So we have gotten the legal backing to do that. Okay. And then after that, we went ahead, we have developed the framework for the participation of uh, the informal sector workers. And uh, we have also developed the draft guidelines for that participation. We also did a survey, actually, about the informal sector, because the informal sector is significantly different from organized arrangements. Exactly. Most informal sector people are self-employed. Mm -hmm. They are not regularly paid, like, on a salary basis. Exactly. Uh -huh. And some of them are even daily paid. Yes, of course. So because of that and the nature of the payment and also their nature, I mean, we have to come up with an arrangement that will be flexible to accommodate their nature. So we have to conduct a study. A study was done uh, we, 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 uh, to find out their characteristics exactly. and discuss with them also what they think should be in, put in place. What to work for them. What will work for them. That's interesting. I'm so happy to hear that yeah. the informal sector or the yeah. unorganized labor will soon be coming That's on board yeah. when it comes to this contributory pension scheme. Mm. Sir, so, we've discovered that some uh, uh, private sectors, they coerce their employees to pay the total 18% uh, into the retirement savings account, shying away from their own 10% contribution. What do you think should be done to private sectors that are behaving this way? In terms of compliance, the, 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 the employer is obliged to contribute. Yeah. Uh, uh, equally the employee. 10% by the employer and 8% by the employee. Mm -hmm. Now, that one should be remitted. So, the employer is not supposed to force the employee to contribute the total of the 18%. Good. Now, what are we going to do? Two things. We want anybody that has this experience to lodge a complaint to the commission. You can lodge it through our website. And you can also formally write, or you can even walk into our offices or branch offices. That is one aspect. And then once we receive that one, we'll follow up. The second one is that we are introducing what I call pension audit. And our pension audit is that we will employ uh, I mean, consultants to go and audit a company. So that audit will entail reviewing the books of the company to see what was done with relation, in relation to pension. They will see. What is the payroll? What is the salary? And also, what is supposed to be the contribution of the staff and also the contribution of the employer? When they see that one, they will see, okay, was it deducted? After it was deducted, was it paid? Now, they can now see from the bank statements who was actually paying. And we are actually elevating this arrangement. Uh, that is why we also introduced the issue of the compliance certificate. Okay. So if you are doing any business with government... Uh, so I will come to that. Okay. Because, because right. that, that's an interesting part that the right. Nigerian contractors would like oh, to have. We take a short break now. Okay. Viewers, the program is Pension Matters, the Pension Awareness Program, where we teach you how to contribute into your retirement service account 
which will open with the pension fund administrator. Today, we are discussing the issue of compliance and enforcement. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll give you more insight into the issue of compliance and enforcement. Don't go away. Do you know there is a new pension scheme in Nigeria? It is mandatory. It is contributory. It is fully funded based on individual retirement savings account. Under the supervision of the National Pensions Commission, the new pension scheme guarantees lifelong financial independence for every citizen of Nigeria in public or private employment. PENCOM says it's a new dawn. Call the National Pensions Commission now or log on to www.pencom.gov.ng for further details. PENCOM, your contribution counts. Welcome back. Sir, before the break, I was going to ask you a question about certain people that do not even know their compliance level about this uh, contributory pension scheme. Some don't comply because they don't have awareness. They don't know what they should do or how they can be part of this pension scheme. So what is your advice to those people that are not complying as stipulated by law? Every employer that has three or more employees to participate in the contributory pension scheme. Mm -hmm. And the employer is obliged to do three things. One is to make sure that his employees open a retirement savings account. Good. Two is to, on a monthly basis, deduct the contribution by the employee and also he, the employer, also put his own contribution. Three is supposed to remit these contributions to the children pension fund administrator of the employee. Then four, he's supposed to do a group life insurance for all the employees under him. Now, employees themselves as a workers, they are supposed to also know that they make sure that they monitor their employer. Okay. First, they should go and open an account with any FFA of his choice. Of their choice. And there are over about 20 pension fund administrators all over the country. They have branches. So all you need to do is walk into the branches. Now you can also log on to our website and see the, their names and their addresses. Okay. So that makes it easy. Or you can even send us mail or call if you want further details. Now, the second thing for any worker is after opening his RSA, is to make sure that every month his employee deducts the money and remit. To the RSA? Yes. Now he will get a quarterly statement from the RSA showing him that the deductions have been made or not. Now if they discover that the employer has not made the contributions, they have not remitted the contributions, they should lodge a complaint with the National Pension Commission. At first I heard that the National Pension Commission, PENCOM, uh, they set up recovery agents. These recovery agents, what are their duties and uh, how far can you evaluate the job they have done so far? Yes. Uh, we set up the issue of recovery as a moon where, because we also review monthly, on a monthly basis the returns submitted by our viewers. Now, we see that from that review, we can see employers that are remitting and those that are not remitting. Exactly. Now, based on our analysis that time, we identified about 15,000 of the employers that were not remitting hmm. consistently. That is huge. Yeah. So we now say, okay, let's get this recovery agent and then let them go to these employers. Identify the liability outstanding that they have not remitted. And then compute also the penalty. And then based on that, then we will now issue the recovery. So we are appointed about 173. Now, the first time when they went for the 15,000, you will be shocked. We found out that about 11,000, 11,000 of them, the addresses were not correct, or they are not, not to be found, no. or they have relocated. 11,000 out of that 15. That's interesting. So, what is my level? Another 3,000, about, 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 I mean, almost 3,000, one have closed shop. They are not in operations. Oh my God. Because <laughs> they are complaining of the economy and things exactly. like that. Yeah, so, one level is about 2,000 to hold on. Now, of that, uh, the recovery agent have recovered about 9.6 billion now. And uh, we are still working with some. Uh, 
we have gone for some of them we have gone to the level of litigation we are in court with about 40 of them hmm. 40 employees have taken to court the court processes about 400 and something we are in different levels of reconciliation because normally what happens is that when the uh, agents establish the liability the employer will say okay this is the liability and they say ah no I don't, I, it's not true <laughs> so they say okay show us the evidence yes. so they will now start looking for evidence of the payment they did now some of them uh, they have to go back even to the fairfairs to get the evidence because i mean they are record keeping bad so i mean obviously so about 400 are in that level of reconciliation okay so that because we don't uh, charge anybody until there is a complete agreement because it's very straightforward if you have remitted there will be evidence yeah. if you have not remitted then it will show it will show so, so another problem or challenge we have with the contributory pension scheme is the issue of the social insurance trust fund people that are contributing under this fund before the enactment of the bill yes they are complaining bitterly what has happened to the money contributed under this fund yes uh, the contributors of the nsitf I mean, from in fact, even from the National Provident Fund in 1962, then it transmitted to NSI in 1994, yeah. and then by 2005, I mean, before when the act came, they were supposed to transfer. Now, what happened is that the asset was transferred to Trust Fund, which is the uh, the FFA that NSIT have established, okay. and that the pensioners are still being paid from that fund. There are about over 4,000 pensioners of that scheme that are today being paid and on average we pay over 20 something million per month to those pensioners and still you I mean some are even uh, uh, coming because uh, when you retire you have to reach 60 years before you can get mm -hmm. now those are who are paying them then we also issued guidelines for the transfer that if you have contributed in that NSITF you can have that your money transferred into your RSA if you have participated in that NSIT, all you need to do is fill the necessary form that will, and, and, and that will provide the information that you, of the company you work, your name, that is an NSIT certificate and number which you can provide. And then you send it either to your RSA or to Transcon and it will be processed. Now let me tell you that uh, right now about 130,000 members of the NSIT have, 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 have had their money transferred and we have transferred almost 9.6 billion okay. in that regard. What about an, um, uh, an employee yes. that did not choose trust fund as a PFA? What happens to the contribution of the person in the social... Yes. No, it's, 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 I mean, it doesn't matter whether it is transferred or any PFA you chose. It will just go to the RSA. It will go to the RSA. Oh, whether it is with IBTC, Midway. Oh, great. Or the issue of certificates of compliance, yes. which is issued to Nigerian contractors. I discovered these days, anytime you want to bid for any contract in Nigeria, they must ask you certificates of compliance from the National Pension Commission. Yes. What is this certificate of compliance and how what is the process of obtaining it from PENCOM? In compliance with the procurement law. Okay. The procurement law says that you must follow uh, some due processes and part of it is uh, tax uh, uh, compliance with the tax authority, mm -hmm. your taxation and also with pension, with uh, ITF and so many others. Yeah. And how do you get a certificate is very clear. Is the requirements are there on our website. Okay. All that we are saying that as an employer Show us the evidence that you have been remitting the monthly contributions. Yeah, yes. yes. And also show us the good life you have taken for your staff. Yes. Once you provide these evidences, then we will process and issue certificate. And we, the, the longest period you need to uh, text to get a certificate is 10 working days. Samos, thank you so very much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Educated and enlightened our our stakeholders and even our Nigerian workforce. Viewers, the program is Special Matters and we've been discussing the issue of compliance and enforcement and you've had it all from the head.
Compliance and Enforcement Department of the National Pension Commission, PEMCOM. To those contractors over there that think obtaining the compliance certificate is very difficult from the National Pension Commission, he has been able to throw more light mm -hmm. on how to get the compliance certificate when you want to bid for any contract in this country. It is regulations made by the BPP, so it's not National Pension Commission that put that law. Well, the program is the pension matters, and up next will be our pension education. Don't go away. Thank you, Princess. Hello, viewers. Welcome to this week's pension education segment. My name is Igbo Patrick. Last week, we took a look at the voluntary contribution and the benefits of contributing, of making additional contribution as you work and as you carry out your various activities as an employee. The voluntary contribution, like I said last week, it's an additional means of adding value to what you have been contributing via the mandatory aspect of the scheme. The voluntary contribution is also another avenue of saving for a rainy day. If you have a project at hand that you feel is worth it and you would want to save and be able to keep up with this is an avenue that can actually be explored. Another benefit is that the voluntary contribution, if left for a period of not less than five years, you will be exempted from a withholding tax when you're withdrawing. So it gives you that opportunity to be able to accumulate as much as you can. I recall also that I said that when the contributions are invested they are invested alongside with your mandatory and the return on investment that accrues to the mandatory also accrues to the voluntary contribution and so you have the opportunity of being able to understand and see clearly on your statements as differentiated by your various respective pension fund administrators in their statements now, the voluntary contribution, you can withdraw from it anytime as long as you are the one who is requesting for that withdrawal. And the withdrawal, all you need to do is simply instruct or write to your PFA, informing them of the need to withdraw. And they will get a, a, a mandate from the pension commission or an approval. And once this approval is given, in some cases, depending on the extent, you may not require that approval from the Pension Commission to withdraw from your voluntary contribution, since it is being done on voluntary basis. So viewers, I encourage you to add more to your contributions as you work. Thank you, and have a lovely week. Thank you, Mr. Patrick, for that pension education. At least, the Nigerian workforce now know that they can make voluntary contribution into the retirement service account, aside from the mandatory one that they make into the retirement service account, which is about 8%. Now, viewers, on that note, we come to the end of our program for today. That's our package of pension matters for this week. We do hope you enjoyed all our offerings, and then hoping that we tune in next week, same station, same time, for another exciting and educative episode of Pension Matters. Until then, I remain yours, Princess Rabbi Ibrahim, and I urge you to enjoy your weekend. God bless you.